In this video we're going to look at geometric progressions and as with arithmetic progressions we're able to calculate the nth term and we also have a formula for calculating the sum of the first n terms. There is a final formula which will give us the sum to infinity so if we had an infinite number of terms what would be the sum of all of those infinite terms added together. So to begin with let's look at a couple of sequences in the same manner as we did before and identify first of all how they differ and also how they can be input into our equations. So if the first sequence we take is 1 1.2, 1.44, 1.728, 2.0736 and that's going to go all the way up to n for the nth term. And then let's take a second sequence which is going to go from 2.8 3.36 to 4.032 to 4.8384 and that sequence will continue up to the nth term. So what we're looking for in this case with it being a geometric progression we're looking for what we need to multiply our first term by to get our second term and then what we need to multiply our second term by to get our third term now that multiple each time is going to be the same number. We can do the same with our second sequence. What do we need to times our first term by to get our second term and so on? Well, if we call this thing that we're multiplying by our common ratio, R, then we need to find R for each of these cases. Now the easiest way to find R, if we know in this first example that 1.2R is 1.44, then the simplest way to find R using our rearranging equations is to divide each side by 1.2. So 1.44 divided by 1.2 is going to give us our common ratio. 1.44 divided by 1.2 is 1.2. Now if we do the same in the second case, we've got 2.8 times R giving us 3.36. Therefore R is 3.36 divided by 2.8 which again gives us 1.2. The point here is that our common ratio is the same but because our first number is different we end up with a different sequence. Once again the first term is given the letter A so the first term here is A and the first term here is A. We have a common ratio R and we have n to represent the nth term or which term we're trying to find in the sequence. So we'll take each of our examples there and for both we'll find the 45th term and the sum of the first 45 terms in the sequence. So our n value is 45 and in our first sequence we have 1.2, 1.44, 1.72, 1.0736, 0.0736 all the way up to our nth term or the 45th term in the sequence. Our value of a in this case is 1.2 and our value of r, our common ratio, is also 1.2. So to find our nth term We need to apply the formula a r to the n minus 1, which in this case a is 1.2, r is 1.2, and n is 45, therefore n minus 1 is 44. And that will give us the 45th term, which in this case is 3657. Point two six two to three decimal places. Next we're going to find the sum of the first n terms. So the sum of the first 45 terms and our formula for this is a r to the n all minus 1 divided by r minus 1. Our a value is 1.2, our common ratio is 1.2, n is 45 minus 1, all divided by our common ratio of 1.2 minus 1, 
which leaves us 0 0.2. And multiplying that through gives us 21,937.572 to three decimal places. Next, we're going to move on to our second sequence and repeat the process. So again, we're going to take n as our 45th term. This time we have 2.8 becoming 3.36, becoming 4.032, 4.8384, all the way up to n, where n is going to be 45. Our first term is 2.8. Our difference between each term is 1.2, so that's 1.2 times 2.8 would give us 3.36. 1.2 times 3.36 would give us 4.032 and so on. The difference between those numbers, the geometric multiple, is exactly the same. So we'll begin with our nth term. The nth term in the sequence is ar to the n minus 1, or 2.8 times 1.2, to the 44, which is 8,533.611 in this case, so significantly higher than last time, even though our common ratio is the same. And the sum of our first n terms, again our formula is a r to the n minus 1 all over r minus 1, 2.8 times 1.2 to the 45 minus 1, all divided by our common ratio minus 1, so 0 0.2. And this time that gives us 51,187.668. Once again, considerably higher than in the previous example. There is actually one more type of question that you might see with this, and this would be for something like compound interest. We have looked at the examples of investing previously, but with compound interest, we can use our geometric progression terms in order to find out how much money we're accumulating in an account. So in a previous tutorial, we used an example of investing, and what we can use the geometric progression formula for is for something called compound interest. So if we use the example we used in the previous tutorial, where our initial investment was £100, and we were receiving an interest rate of 12%, therefore, our common ratio is going to be 1.12. So if we look at the numbers in the sequence, first of all, we've got 100 as our first term. Our second term is going to be 112. Our third term is going to be £125.44 and so on. If we wanted to know how much money that £100 would have generated after a 15 year period as an example, then we could find the 15th term, or the nth term, because the 15th term would represent how much that £100 had grown to, increasing by 12% each year for 15 consecutive years. So our nth term is a r to the n minus 1 which is 100, times our 1.12. And if we're doing 15 years, then that will be raised to the power 14. So after 15 years, that £100 investment will have become £488.71.